In your top stories at 1030, a Buffalo man who tried to shoot and kill a Buffalo police officer in June of 2016 will spend the next 19 years in prison. 19-year-old Andre Fuller pleaded guilty to attempted murder and criminal possession of a weapon last fall. Police say Fuller was running away from the scene of a robbery on Dote Street. Officer Tony Fanera caught up to him. Fuller pulled out a loaded gun, pressed it against the officer's chest, and pulled the trigger. The gun did not go off. Officer Fanera spoke during sentencing. That night affected me forever. Not 15 years, not 20 years, not 60 years. The emotional impact it's had on my family is unacceptable. I think everybody is grateful. I'm not so sure about you, but everybody is grateful that uh, whatever the condition of the gun, that it didn't go off. Fuller's lawyer says the gun did not go off because the safety was on, but the prosecution says that was not the case. Officer Fenera and the district attorney's office both, both asked for the maximum sentence. Crime Stoppers and the Buffalo Police Department are offering a reward for this third straight night for information on a suspected killer. Up to $2,500 is being offered for information leading to the arrest of the person who killed Quantrell Carson. He was shot and killed January 4th on Northland Avenue. His body was found on a sidewalk. Call the number on your screen if you have any information. Leaders in Grand Island want to give people more choices when it comes to Internet access. News Force Dave Graber tells us how they are fighting for faster speeds and what the town's plan is to serve people better. He said straight out, they're ripping you off. For years, Spectrum Time Warner has been promising one thing and delivering another. So they've been ripping us off for years. For Grand Island Town Supervisor Nate McMurray, the Attorney General's massive lawsuit against Time Warner Cable Spectrum was a call to arms. But McMurray and the town board have already been busy. They unanimously agreed to participate in a study that would build a broadband network along a nearly one-mile stretch of Baseline Road. There's times at night here where you can download those apps and do those speed tests. My speed will be five megabytes per second, which is literally the speed you get in developing countries. McMurray says there's no doubt. Just look at these speeds I tested while at the town hall earlier today. Less than two megabits per second for downloading. Less than one megabit per second for uploading. Our broadband on Grand Island is so weak and so poor. It's important for residents and it's especially important for attracting businesses. The, the infrastructure of the future is broadband. You have to have broadband. To do business in the 21st century, you need that type of technology. McMurray says costs are reasonable for half the cost of a turf football field, an increasingly common sight among high schools across western New York, residents on Grand Island would have the opportunity to get better service than they're getting now. And more importantly, they'd have a choice. We have this problem where Time Warner has us and we have no leverage over them whatsoever. By creating this type of infrastructure, we start to create leverage. While Grand Island is the only municipality that's come forward with plans for its own broadband network, Erie County is nearly complete with its study to extend the reach of broadband internet all across the county. Like Grand Island, they want to give residents in rural and even in some urban areas better access and higher speeds. But they also want to give them a choice when it comes to providers. Reporting in the newsroom, Dave Graber, News 4. Across the nation tonight, a shooting is under investigation in Miami Gardens, Florida, that left three people injured, including two ninth grade students. It happened on a street between the city middle school and the high school. Police say someone drove up on the teens and started shooting. All three victims have non life threatening injuries. No arrests have been made. Four people charged with a disturbing hate crime in an attack against a mentally disabled teen that was shown live on Facebook have all pleaded not guilty. The suspects are accused of kidnapping and torturing an 18-year-old man with schizophrenia. They are facing hate crime, kidnapping, and battery charges. Their next court date will be in March. The four defendants will remain in custody. Shame! 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 Protesters met face to face with the newly confirmed Education Secretary Betsy DeVos in Washington, D.C. today. Protesters physically blocked her from entering the Jefferson Middle School Academy, where she was supposed to meet with teachers. She ended up getting in through another entrance. Opponents say she is against public schools and pro charter schools. Vice President Mike Pence broke the tie to vote her in. Reporters asked her about the meeting as she was leaving. It was really wonderful to visit this school, and I look forward to many visits 
of many great public schools, both in D.C. and across the country. DeVos did not comment on the protest when asked. One person was arrested. President Donald Trump took to Twitter after the Ninth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals refused not to reinstate his travel ban. He called the ruling, quote, a disgraceful decision. Last night, he also tweeted, see you in court in all caps. The three judges in California say the government did not have evidence immigrants from, or refugees from those seven, seven Muslim-majority countries were behind terrorist attacks in the U.S. President Trump couldn't escape questions about the ban at a meeting this afternoon with the Japanese prime minister. It wasn't the only hot topic. Craig Boswell has the latest. President Trump spoke to reporters on Air Force One Friday evening, saying he's likely to draft a new executive order on immigration. His current ban on travel for people from seven predominantly Muslim countries is tied up in the courts. We'll win that battle, but we also have a lot of other options, including just filing a brand new order on Monday. The president said the new order would change very little from the original one he issued last month. We're going to have very, very strong vetting. I call it extreme vetting, and we're going to have very strong security in our country. We are going to have people come into our country that want to be here for good reasons. The Trumps are hosting Japan's Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and his wife at the president's Mar-a-Lago estate in Florida for the weekend. President Trump welcomed Abe to the White House where they discussed security, trade, and China. We have a very, very good bond, very, very good chemistry. I'll let you know if it changes, but I don't think it will. The two leaders plan to continue discussions and play some golf. Abe was one of the first foreign leaders Mr. Trump welcomed to Trump Tower right after he was elected president. Greg Boswell, CBS News, the White House. He may be little, but he's mighty. Coming up next, we'll introduce you to a therapy dog in Texas helping first responders during traumatic situations.